Welcome, everybody. We are coming from Manatee Libraries with another episode of What's the Hoopla? <laughs> and we hope you are safe and well and keeping your sanity somehow. Um, we're going to be talking about one of the thousands of films that are available on the streaming service called Hoopla Digital, which is available through the Manatee Libraries website. And uh, Hoopla has a cornucopia of streaming materials, including ebooks, audiobooks, music, even comic books, television shows, and film, all free with your Manatee Libraries library card. And a little later, we will tell you how you can access Hoopla Digital, and we'll also tell you how you can get your very own library card online if you don't have one already. Tonight, we're going to, to be discussing the movie, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. And there are going to be plenty of spoilers, just so you know. <laughs> um, but before we get started, let us take a roll call of the room. Uh, hopefully, when I call your name, you will raise your hand or say hi or something like that. I'm Gina Johnson, the Programming Coordinator for Manatee Libraries. And next to me is the money lady, Mary Tishbein, fiscal analyst, thank you, of the Manatee hey. Library System. We've got librarians in the room. We've got Silva Osborne. We have David Brakefield. We have Aaron Drake. We have Liz Gray. <laughs> Rachel Suntop. And we have some honored guests who are film lovers. We've got Kim. She is holed up in a <laughs> hotel room in Toronto. Also known as Alcatraz. <laughs> and, we have, <laughs> and we have the one and only Max Keller with us. I... He's in the middle. It's like the Brady Bunch today. So he's yep. like in the middle. He's um who is in the middle? It was uh Andy. Alice. Alice uh, made. Oh, oh yeah. Alice. <laughs> Yeah. Now, why, don't we, why don't we get started? Um, we Do it. Have, David Brakefield is going to introduce the film to us before we get started talking. Remember, David? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting there kind of like... I think so. <laughs> um, so we're talking about, talking about the movie or talking about Hoopla? No, talking about the movie. Oh. Silva, Silva has Hoopla duty. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this was a 2008 film. Um, it was... Based, I... I don't have my notes in front of me, so I can't remember the author's name. So it's based on a novel. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the funny thing is I was talking to Jessica last night because um, she had seen it too and she'd also read the book. And um, I just, uh, my overall, I mean, I don't think I'm ready to even really like take it all in, mm -hmm. but it's basically set during um, probably sometime in the 1930s um, outside of Germany and in one of the concentration camps. and um, it's about, it's about basically um, uh, the son of a commandant who is the head of the camp who befriends a young boy on the other side of the fence in the camp. And I'm not going to give away anything, but um, it's quite a ride. Um, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a great movie. It should be seen at least once. Mm -hmm. yeah. So who wants to get started talking about how they feel about this film? <laughs> Mary? <laughs> Oh, go Mary, go Mary. I know. Oh, well, I do love, I do love a good Holocaust movie. I mentioned that to Gina mm -hmm. earlier, and um, just just so Kim doesn't think I'm a jerk, I used to do stand up comedy. So some, I think you've already picked up on the fact that I'm kind of goofy. So I love it. That's okay, awesome, good. and I think I, I admire people that do stand up. I'd love to see you do a gig sometime. But oh, I've retired. It, they just don't <laughs> pay me enough. But but I do these now. Your blood. Yeah. <laughs> I've always got something goofy to say, but I really enjoyed the film. What, Max? I was saying, like, be a ghostwriter or something, or I don't know. Never mind. You good? No, you're good <laughs> for Rosie like O'Donnell. Carrie Fisher. For Carrie Fisher? Like Carrie Fisher. She oh, I'm with you. Yeah, I was going to say, Carrie Fisher. <laughs> yeah. Um, so back to the Holocaust. I enjoyed the film. I have not, um, I had not seen it prior to today. And I didn't know what to expect. I found it to be very touching, very, um, 
can I say? Um, it ripped my heart out because of the current situation we have in the world right now. I don't think I was very grounded to absorb a really sad story. So it took me a minute and it, it hit home. And I'm sure everything they were trying to do with the film worked in my current um, uh, emotional state. I thought the music was incredibly effective. I thought the um, editing was sharp. I love the scenery. I thought all of the actors were wonderful and nobody stood out as um, overacting or underacting except for the one Nazi guy who I kept thinking of the sound of music because his name, I, his name wasn't Ralph, right? But I kept thinking, you know, you were- Kurt Coulter. Say that again? Kurt Coulter. That guy. I kept thinking of, you know, from the sound of music, I kept Why thinking- Why does it have to be a hard K? You know, like they just want you to know this is a mean guy. Like his name is Kurt Cutler. You know? <laughs> even the even the um the his jawline had sharp edges. I was just oh he was God. very sharp when he was dressed in his whole thing. You know, the leather long leather coat and everything. Yeah, he was very. He looked like Max Headroom. Or remember that? Mm -hmm. yes, I do. Oh, yeah. yeah, he yes. really looked like a chiseled. Um, a statue almost kind of he scary did. i thought he really did yeah. and dolan esque but, almost yeah yeah yes. okay. but i i really thought it did its job well mm -hmm. it was just very sad for me so timing wise it was rough to watch during the current mm -hmm. situation in the world as i said but i thought it was really effective and i kind of saw where it was going mm -hmm. and was horrified to watch where it went mm -hmm. and just had to sit for about 10 minutes after and not move mm -hmm. after it ended see i didn't see the ending coming at all i feel like it just all of a sudden you knew where it was going to go and then it happened yeah. very quickly yeah i agree was, there was totally. no warning at all i totally agree yeah. i i have to say that i'm happy that um i think it was aaron Aaron, you recommended this movie? Yeah. Okay. I'm happy that you did. I actually loved this film. Um, I was definitely shocked at where it went. Um, but I'm telling you this movie, when I first started watching it, the first five minutes of it was a movie. Because you see <laughs> this kid, you see him carefree with his friends, you know, going through Berlin, you know, like they're pretending they're planes and they're flying through and they're free. And, you know, then you see um, where he lives, you see the opulence, you see the luxury, you see all the things they have. And as he's passing that truck, you see um, these Jewish people being rounded up basically. But, but all throughout the music, the, the very beautiful music is playing and you kind of feel like you're, you're on a spring day and look at all these flowers and this beautiful stuff. And, and right there, you see that scene with, with the Jewish people being put in the truck and everything. That was a movie in itself, as far as mm -hmm. I was concerned, you know? But then um, I have to say the way um, they approached the film, the music that they played, the music really tricked you, I thought. It really tricked you into thinking that, you know, this is a, almost, almost like a coming of age mo movie in a sense, even though it's dealing with very, very serious um, um, material. Um, I just thought it was, I don't want to throw around the word masterpiece, but I really thought it was a really, really great film. Definitely. I agree with you, Gina. I just, I, it almost felt it, it, the whole movie was kind of done in such a way where everything seemed to be through the little boy's eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. From his perspective. So everyone looks much more intimidating. I mean, because of that. And I also, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen at the end, but I kind of thought this is not going to go over. This is not going to go well, him going to, you know, right. into the pajamas and thinking right. this is not going to be good. And then when it actually does happen, it's like a, a, a punch to the gut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're just I, like, I, oh my God, oh my God. You know, <laughs> I actually thought that there was going to be a moment where, you know, someone came to save the day and it was going to be sort yeah. of a lesson learned. Yeah. Like, um, and there were and there were moments all through the movie where you're unsettled. Like I I I, I had this uneasy feeling like when oh we have a home in the country now and then they're going yeah. to the country and thinking well we know what's outside the town you know and mm -hmm. the other thing is when they get to the house the house is cold as ice. I was just yeah. like this is creepy cold. That was one of the things I loved about the movie because yeah. they show you 
that this boy and this family is actually being put into a camp too, in a sense, yes. you know, because yeah. the house, the house is, is mm-hmm. like a, a fortress. Mm-hmm. There are gates around the house. There, there are soldiers and dogs guarding the house. Right. And there's that gate. He can't go anywhere. Right. Um, and then when he, and when they go into the house, you see him sitting on the staircase the and bars. the staircase is bars. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. That really I really thought that there. was so well done. Yeah, the house really reflected a shift in the atmosphere of the family. Like at first it was this warm, loving family, and then mm-hmm. the, and then they move to this house, and it becomes cold and yeah. mm-hmm. dysfunctional and creepy. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was an interesting way of 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 showing that. Oh, I loved I loved that. I really yeah, did. definitely. Mm-hmm. To me, this was a very powerful film because. My dad's side of the family is Jewish, and a lot of them died in the Holocaust. Um, plus, he had an aunt that survived the Holocaust, actually. Um, she was a seamstress, and she was able to survive, and she had a baby that she hid under her shirt the whole time. And now um, her son, is he's in his 70s now. He's alive. He's in bad health, though. Um, but just having seen this film you know, resonates with me because of what's happened to my family. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's intense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Painful, I bet, too. You you must ache for your ancestors knowing yeah. Yeah. but you know, but to see something represented like that. My dad's family, they almost never talk about any family or anything. It's just too painful to talk about. I've only seen a couple pictures of, of you know, of like his his family, the ones that were, you know, put in concentration camps, and then they just they can't talk about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say that I agree with um, Mary that while it is beautiful and well done. It was really hard to watch. <laughs> I think partly because of what's going on in the world. And also yeah. as a parent of an eight year old boy, it felt like, uh, like, you oh know, <laughs> That's so <laughs> it's like eight years old. Yeah. It's a little too close to home. Although I think approaching it through the eyes of a, a German child is a really interesting approach to the subject mm-hmm. that I haven't yes. seen before. And I thought that that was really creative and and really interesting to see it see it done that way mm-hmm. yeah i thought it was just so upsetting to just see his innocence kind of just deteriorating right in front of your face yeah. that was kind of what hit me really hard yeah yeah definitely the thing that amazed me about both the kids is that they kept thinking things were something else like bruno um, you know, he thought, oh, like, um, you, you guys are farmers, right? Um, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And even Shmuel was kind of like, yeah, my, my grandparents caught something, caught a bug or something. And, you know, it, it's, you know, I'm guessing it's adults trying to shield them from what's really going on and who wouldn't do that, you know? But, um, that, that really struck me. You know, even Shmuel, who was living through it, you know, had these ideas that weren't quite right, you know. And I also wonder, like, with all the, the family relationships, like the the father's father and mother, how the father was gung-ho and the mother wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it is, and his own wife is trying to be supported, but you see her deteriorating as the film goes. And I, I was actually afraid at one point she was going to have her put away or do something really horrible to her because he was just, there's something about the husband. Oh, awful. Yeah, it was just like, you, you just didn't know what this guy was going to do next. So it they was... really were unrelenting with the brutality of the men. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the tutor and the way, way he taught the, the children, the way the daughter changed, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The daughter was kind of okay. brainwashed at that point. I mean, it's yeah. like, you could kind of see where it was going. I mean, you could see maybe maybe that there was a possibility that she could, could get out of out of it and see the light, but you could see she was putting all this Nazi propaganda and her right. posters in her room and stuff. And yeah, it was like, it, it, it seemed like the only person that wasn't completely consumed by hate was 
you know, the little boy. Yeah. Yeah. And it seems like she changed her mind at the end when um, Lieutenant Kurt Kotler mm -hmm. wasn't around anymore. Right. She's yeah. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll leave. <laughs> <You know? laughs> no, no. And when well, her brother was like, I want to stay, she was like, what? <laughs> Well, I don't think she fully understood what was going. I mean, she was only twelve. I don't feel like she fully had a grasp on everything that was going on. She was just really into. She was going through the whole teenager having her first crush yeah. on him, the older guy. So she was getting into what he was into because she was so obsessed with him. That's right. And then once they took him away, yeah. she just was like, "Well, now what?" Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I don't think she fully understood the severity of everything and like all of the beliefs that she was starting to try to right. take on. I don't think she really understood what she was actually doing. She was just doing it for him. That reminds me of the scene where um, Bruno goes into the basement and he sees her dolls. That yes. was so cleverly done. Yes. Because the dolls were all nude and they were in a wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. So it's basically you know, mirroring what's going on in the concentration camp. I thought that that was an amazing yeah. touch in the thumb, you know? Mm. Yep. That was really creepy scene, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was horrifying. It was horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. It really, it really was. Yeah. Because you remember those dolls before, they were all dressed and they, they were all, you know. I yeah. find yeah. it interesting that awesome. um, the feedback has been that the precursor, the foundation for your watching the movie now made you feel more emotional but in some ways from my own sort of maybe myopic perspective of just having returned from europe to do a documentary honoring world war ii allied soldiers one of my interviews within the next week or two was going to be with a westerbork transit camp survivor mm. and when you think about that were it not for the coronavirus interrupting everything all of europe was ramping up for liberation and VE Day celebrations, mm -hmm. because especially there, mm. the horrors of the Holocaust and of Nazi occupation, and the miracle that was liberation, piece of geography by piece of geography, is is still very intrinsic to the people there. It's such a um, a, a part of a, a, a deeply entrenched part of their culture. They really almost take it for granted in ways that we are not used to because it was on their soil. There mm -hmm. are cemeteries honoring and people are, are raised honoring soldiers and everything. And so I feel actually as someone listening to your recollections of the movie's impact on you, almost as though it's a blessing in disguise that because it really in a way puts you deeper in the moment that, that, you know, the setting for a movie like that was very obviously traumatic and emotionally draining. And by the time, you know, these concentration camps are at their worst, people were, have been starving and, and just watching all kinds of horrific things. So I wonder if somehow in a strange way, it's almost, um, I don't know, it's almost like a gift to take a movie that's, that's so that's saying trying to say so much there's so much that's important mm -hmm. and and that has even touched rachel and and for people that have heritage that lived through that firsthand um that it's interesting that aaron recommended it now and that that's the added emotional depth that you feel watching it at the 75th year yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah i Actually, I did kind of want to say something because I was cursed with reading this frickin' book when I was 13, honestly. So, unfortunately, I didn't want to, like, watch it being, like, comparing and contrasting it. But actually watching this movie, it was, honestly, I would say... Crap, where is my mind right now? I would say I actually kind of forgotten a lot of how well it still managed to capture like some of the ideas of the movie, like still like presenting like the little, I don't know what the, what the heck I am thinking, but probably <laughs> like the sense of like unawareness of like the world around them. I definitely forgotten how well shot the movie was, honestly, like the opening scene was beautiful. It really was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and honestly, again, the ending is completely freaking 
emotional as heck. I'm trying my hardest not to swear. I'm really sorry, Jenna. You're doing sorry. good. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I was also like thinking because one of the concerns I of the things I'm not a fan of with this film is it is PG-13. I don't know. I just prefer like my Holocaust stories to be pretty gritty, but it's like it still manages to like do some good stuff. Like I was thinking the one scene with the Nazi being like showing like the one woman, like the fricking smoke from all like the burning right. people and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was really good. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. Honestly, I think you actually summed up the positives really well, honestly. Yeah, on that note, I think they did a really good job of implying the horrors of a concentration camp without showing it graphically. Yes. Um, like the like the dolls and the smoke. I mean, it really, and I, in some ways, it makes it even more creepy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the implication of those things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a few scenes in there that were pretty brutal, you know, like the, the, the father, you know, beating up the the old man that was working there and stuff I and mean, yeah that was so awful horrible horrible scenes he was such a nice man it was so sad and, mm -hmm. and he did yeah. I mean, it's like you know that i could see how that would be especially disturbing to younger people too mm -hmm. anyone, but you know i, I think teenagers. they did a good job showing uh bruno's reaction to that and how jolting it was for him you know every time there was something jolting like that they would really hone in on his eyes, sort of, you know, he'd be like, taken aback, you know? He is such a talented actor for a little boy. I mean, yes. I was blown yes. away by his talent. <clears throat> for sure. Mm -hmm. That scene uh, that Max mentioned about the smoke uh, yes. coming from the chimney, that's one of my favorite scenes because we see the turning point in the mother. Mm -hmm. Because all through the movie, from the very beginning, I'm looking at the mother and I'm, and I'm thinking, you know, who are you? You know, what, what's going through your mind? Um, why are you enabling this? Um, when she finally realized what was really going on and she basically, you could see her falling apart, like just, yeah. just her expression, you could see her mm -hmm. falling apart. I was like, thank God, you know? And, and I was just so happy to see her transform into a human with independent yes. thought, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And how she reacted when um, the grandmother, they were burying the grandmother and the, oh, uh, her yeah. son, you know, put the Hitler thing on it. And mm -hmm. she was like, she would not have wanted that, you know, and she tried to take it off. And I thought she saved, she saved, you know what I mean? Um, her soul is saved, you know, um, because it's, it's, it's like, for me, being with that man, being with those soldiers, being where they were is like a type of hell, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's how I felt about it. That's, that's one of my favorite scenes, actually. I like the part when they show that they boarded up the uh, Bordeaux's, boarded up Bruno's window so he couldn't see the view. Yeah. And then he goes and looks out his sister's window and says, wow, what a great view. And it's the front gate. It's not a great right. view. It's That's still, good. but it's yeah. something, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, sorry. My mom just came in. Oh, okay. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Hi Maggie. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I forgot to. No, so who didn't speak? Everyone spoke. I, Anything? Can I actually mention something which was yeah. really stupid? Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I was seeing another Holocaust movie about from a child's point of view called Jojo Rabbit or something. And yeah, I just I haven't seen that yet. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to say I felt like the opening scene was kind of like an homage. I can't show it now, but it's like, oh. you know, how it's like the opening of Boy in the Striped Pajamas, it's like the kids like, oh, we're like planes and stuff. And the oh. kid wanting to be a Nazi does something similar, but instead it's just like, hi, everybody. Oh, crap. It's, you know, it's a Nazi movie. Who cares? Sorry. <laughs> I definitely have to see that. That's interesting because mm, this okay. movie, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, came out 28 years ago. 
Can Hard to believe. Imagine, can you believe that? 12 years ago, actually. That. 12 years ago, you mean? Yeah, it's not quite 12 years ago. But, but, 2008. <laughs> you know, it's good you're not in fiscal. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> Thank God it was just twelve. Oh my God. That's okay. But that kid is like a grown man now. Probably oh yeah. 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 That's still a long time ago. He probably has a family and yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting. He and the actress who plays his mom, Jillian Anderson, they're in a Netflix show together where they play mother and son, and it's not about the Holocaust, and it's also not appropriate for children, but oh. it is a good show. <laughs> I want what show? It's I Sex Education. Oh, okay. oh yeah, that. Yeah. He's in that? that. yeah, he's in that. He's oh. the son, and she plays his mom. I want to redeem myself. I hit 28 years because the recommendation I'm giving is a 28-year-old movie. So that's where I got <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Would that be Schindler's List? That was made about No, 20. no. It's I don't think that's on Hoopla. No. Yeah. Um, great film, though. Total masterpiece, except for that one scene where um, Liam Neeson is going, one more. One more with this ring. That wasn't good. But everything else. (laughs) (laughs) So wasn't it amazing about um, Kurt Kotler and how he was this real big tough guy and everything, but his father was basically um, a dissenter Mm -hmm. and left. Professor of literature. Professor of literature. Yeah. That's a story. Like, how did you become what you became, Kurt? Like what happened, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the rebellion. Well, that, that that was easily one of the. That's probably for me was one of the most unsettling scenes in the whole movie, where he's at the table and the and the the, the husband is yeah. interrogating him at the table. Yes. And it's like it's just it's palpable, and you can see you can see the sweat. You can almost see the sweat coming down his face. You know. Being and the only hot- reason he was being interrogated is because he let slip what was really happening at the camp to the wife. Right. And the husband was angry about it. You yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. Awful, awful, awful. Mm. How about Shmuel? Great oh. name. Great, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, it's really good. Mm-hmm. Adorable. Really, yeah. That, my one criticism of it is I wish they had shown a little bit more of his experience. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. Just a little more. Yeah. And, yeah. I kind of think that uh, there was criticism when the movie came out. There were some people who felt that the movie was kitschy and um, unrealistic. And um, one, uh, I wrote this down. This this woman by the name of Manola Dargis of New York Times. Mm-hmm. She said, and I quote: "The film trivialized, glossed over, kitschy up." commercially exploited and hijacked the Holocaust for a tragedy about a Nazi family. Oh, gosh. How do people feel about that quote? No, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I I actually didn't agree. I disagree because I feel like you're seeing both sides. You're seeing what it must have been like to live in a a family of Nazis Mm -hmm. and how there may have been members of the family that didn't quite agree or see eye to eye on one another. I mean, you have to wonder how much of that really went on. Mm-hmm. It did go on in Germany. Yeah. 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 I, I, I feel that they're trying to say, you know, you can, never, you can never compare the Nazi experience to the Jewish experience as no. far as pain and, you know, loss and everything. But I think what they're trying to say in a low-key way is that, you know, people who are oppressing are also putting themselves in a kind of prison. Yes. Something that... Um, you know, they've touched on when it, when it comes to American slavery, for instance, and how the oppressors were also putting themselves in a kind of prison, you know? Uh-huh. So even though, like, the Jewish ex- or the German experience cannot compare in any way, shape, or form to the Jewish experience at that time, um, but I guess it gives you a little window into how these dynamics must have gone on, you know? And, and, and the power of the propaganda, too. I mean, so yeah. many... There were Germans that, that were victims of propaganda and mm-hmm. went in, it, I mean, in, in the early stages, they went in all gung-ho based on the lies that Hitler told them. But then by the end, they were enlisting old men, 
you know, and, and like 13 and 14 year old kids, like their people didn't even have a choice. So many, and believe me, my grandfather was a Canadian soldier and I'm, I'm not making excuses for the Germans by any stretch, but there is definitely a component to that history where the people themselves were at, at a certain level victims of, of Hitler as well, because he, he just, he, he yeah. took control of every, every living creature he could either mm-hmm. brainwash them or force them into, into his mold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would say that it, it felt uncomfortable to be made to empathize with a Nazi family, but that I think it's valuable to kind of consider their perspective and experience and hopefully learn from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and as far as it being unrealistic, I mean, I do see that like the boys meeting all those times and not being caught by like a patrolling guard. That yeah, is exactly. unrealistic. You but I think that, 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 I mean, I think you have to like suspend disbelief to like yeah. get the message. I mean, it's yeah. not supposed to be like a historical right. event. It's supposed right. to send a message. Right. I agree. It was it was a lot easier to empathize with an eight year old boy who's totally clueless as to what's going on, who wants to love his father, who wants to be proud of his father, who isn't sure what his father's actually doing. And Kim, you mentioned that propaganda, you know, that scene where he's looking uh, at the movie that his father is showing the other soldiers, and the movie shows actors, I'm sure, um, dressed in pajamas pretending that they're at Club Med, basically, in the camp, yeah. you know. Uh, they have a cafe. Right. They yeah. get to play badminton or whatever. Well, you know, right. There was, a, there was a camp where they did do that. They, had, they, made, they created a camp. I don't remember which one, what it was called, but they, they created a camp for the purposes of propaganda, yeah, film it, yeah. and make, to show the outside world, oh, everything's just hunky-dory here. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, they did that with a lot of the, the concentration camps. They made them made these propaganda videos to make it look like they're just having a bunch of fun and yeah. dancing and playing games yeah. and they're all so happy and smiling. Great scene. Even when even when the Jewish people were led to trains to to take to concentration camps to the ovens, they didn't know some of the time, you know, why they were even getting on the train. I mean right. Mm-hmm. It, there were just so many lies, layers and layers upon lies to different mm-hmm. demographics and and I think it's wonderful that a movie like that, even 12 or one day it will be 28 years old, but it will always, <laughs> it will always be as timeless. But, you know, hey, 2008 and 12 is 20. I think you were probably thinking, you know, 2008. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it will have, um, I think it will have a role in history and an, imp- an increasingly important one because of what it does show. And, and these are very important lessons that, that, PG-13 audiences need to see and Mm -hmm. society needs to remember. And I feel that it has to be bundled with other material. Yes. Um, For sure. I did actually kind of want to add like something kids, Kim. Yes. Said actually, because like you mentioned, like the Jewish people didn't even know they were going on the train. I did want to mention, you did make me think of a really good Easter egg and, or I don't know if it's an Easter egg or anything, but it's like, they say it's like when the two kids are like in the shower or something, and it's like one of the Jewish persons is like, it's okay, it's just a shower. So it's like, I don't know. I think I just wanted to elaborate on what you said. And mm-hmm. I don't know if I did have to say a criticism again, I do kind of wish there was a little more guilt tighter. We see a little bit more of this child's perspective, almost so the audience. Mm just as a show a lot more depressing this is still a depressing right movie, yeah. but it's just my point of view I, good, I, feel, though. I feel that i was tricked all the way up until the very end like mm-hmm. i kept thinking he's gonna get out of this you know you do think that well like didn't it didn't a lot of the people that were in these prisons feel that way Mm-hmm. Were they clinging Probably. to the same hope that the ju- the viewer would be? Oh, really? Probably. Probably. That's be. a good point. I, I kind of feel like they were the the um, proverbial frogs in the boiling pot of water, mm-hmm. because many Jewish people, as you guys all know, um, the rise of Hitler. Some of them saw the handwriting on the wall, and they were like, "We're leaving," you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the others were like, "We're German citizens. They can't do yeah. that to us, and they never would do that to us." Right. You know? yeah. Right. Um, 
and I'm sure as, you know, things got worse and worse and worse, they're like, oh, you know, we're, we're going to get out of here. We're going to whatever. Um, there's this great show on HBO uh, that, that's kind of related to what we're talking about right now called The Plot Against America, based on a book written by um, Philip Roth. Mm. And it's basically an alternate history. What if uh, Charles Lindbergh had become president? Because back in the day, he did, I think he did have an unsuccessful run, but he was a Nazi sympathizer. And so Mm -hmm. the show is coming from a Jewish family's perspective. They're living in this country and where Charles Lindbergh has, in fact, become president. And um, it's free now. Like HBO is free right now because of the pandemic. I didn't know that. Me either. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. They have an amazing library. So yeah. 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 Seriously. This show I'm really enjoying a lot. It comes on every Monday. And uh the first this. four are posted. So yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. Somebody was talking about I'm sorry, I can't remember over there. Um I don't I'm not sure what it was it prompted, but the the transit camp that I was going to have an interview with a survivor, it was a, a it was a it was called a transit camp. So uh, it was in North Holland called a place called Westerbork. And the saddest thing about, I mean, there's so many sad things about it, but German Jews went there to seek refuge. And then the Germans, so they went, it went from a place where they were refugees to captives. And can you imagine how horrific that would have been to go from what you found as a safe place into one where you were a prisoner and then, wow. You know, just like, like Anne Frank and her family. Pardon me. Like Anne Frank and her family were there too. Yes, wow. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So. Awful. Wait, wait, wait! Hang on, hang on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's see. What else? What else? It's a slightly off topic, but okay. um, if you if you're interested in seeing um, or if you're interested in the Holocaust, then I really recommend the Holocaust Florida Holocaust Museum in St. Petersburg. It's very close by. I've been there a few times, and it's a really powerful and beautifully made museum that you can go to. And they have a box car there. Uh, I think it was one of the original. From what oh, camp? Do you know? I don't know what camp it's from, but it's one of the original box Oh, cards. my gosh. I, that's, a, that's been on my, my list of places I wanted to go since I moved there. I'm really glad that you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, yeah I second that. It's great. They also have very thought-provoking exhibits, um, you know, that are temporary, too. Like, they did a, an exhibit about, like, the homosexuals and in the, the Holocaust that I thought was really quite amazing. And, you know... It, because a lot of times it's the Jews that get the most attention, but you know, there's all these other groups of people that you're right. It as well. Mm-hmm. You're right. They, they, they talk about, about gypsy, yeah. baby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And then of course, I mean, if you ever get to Washington DC, you should go to the Holocaust Museum there. That's yes. phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. But I do recommend the one in St. Pete. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Shout out. Thank you for the reminder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. The one in Berlin is amazing too. I don't know if anybody's oh. ever been to that one. I but it's, to the, it's I went to the incredible. Monument. I went to a monument in Berlin. It was the Holocaust Memorial. And yes. all these different uh, solid like say blocks of cement basically and you just kept walking and they Yes. That you just kept meeting up with people and then walking away. It was just like, wow. yeah, I w- yeah, I, I saw that too. That was very powerful as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to that when I was in Berlin. So that was pretty amazing. So um, I really, I this movie didn't make me feel sad. I mean, and I think it's because of the way the music really tricked me. It really fooled me. And I kind of felt like this is not going to be bad. This is not going to be bad. (laughs) No, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it has like a little bittersweet feel to it. 
Okay. They did a great job of building up the suspense and building up their emotions. Right. You know, um, I mean, they, they had me up until the very, very last minute, I have to be honest. And then when they just kept showing the door mm. and they just kept showing the door, showing the door, and then just slowly mm. fading out, I was like, powerful oh, show. Gosh, like he's gone, you know, like and all, and all those on all those pajamas hanging from the hooks. Yes. Yeah, that was an incredible scene. Yes. It's powerful, very powerful. Very powerful. Yes. I, I think we definitely need to give some props to the to the director. Mm -hmm. for um, doing these great, you know, scenes that he did, the, setting them up so nicely, you know. I think this is going to be one of those films that, you know, is, there's, there's like just a, a cadre of films that I think of when I think of anything to do with the Nazis and the Holocaust. I always yeah. think of Judgment at Nuremberg. I should think of Schindler's List. Mm -hmm. Um, at least one version of the Diary of Anne Frank. I mean, you know, there's all these films that I wouldn't want to see every day, but I think there's, it, there's a certain, these are films that you should see at least once in your life. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Because you, you need to, you need to, to understand, you need to experience it, and you need to never forget it. I think right. that's the whole thing. In the well, movie. I have one story. Um, when I was in high school, and I hate to say this, um, I was probably 13 or something. I was a freshman or whatever. Um, I had never seen what actually happened during the Holocaust. Um, mm -hmm. When I was in class one day, the teacher just played this film. It was real film. It wasn't like a movie or feature film. It was actual film of the liberation of uh, one of the concentration camps. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and I just kind of looked around me and I was like, what am I seeing right now? It's like mm -hmm. this, this really, really happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing at the library, we were going to do it this month, but since the library is closed for the month, um, at our Braden River mm -hmm. branch, we're going to have, um, a program called the Holocaust in cinema. And perhaps, uh, the boy in the striped pajamas will be, um, featured or mentioned or something like that. But basically, um, a man by the name of Dr. Krauss is going to be talking about, the good, the bad, and the ugly, so to speak, when it comes to Holocaust films, mm -hmm. uh, things that are not true, things are not, that are not depicted correctly. So he's going to go through all of that. And perhaps um, the boy in the striped pajamas will be one of them. Mm -hmm. I think definitely Schindler's, Schindler's List is going to be one of them because mm -hmm. he talked to me about what he's going to talk about. But um, all of you who are watching, you know, keep on the lookout for that. We're going to try to have him in the fall. Yes. Um, awesome. I'm looking forward to that. I really am. Yeah. Me too. I would definitely be there. Yeah. That sounds so enlightening. Yes, definitely. Good for so, you for arranging for a fellow like that to shed perspective that's so valuable on this subject matter. Kudos yes. to you. We were, we were very lucky to get him. And this is um, a collaboration between the Manatee Library System and the Manatee Film Society. So we're all very happy about that. Yes. So we've got about 15 minutes left. And um, one of the things that we like to do during these discussions is to give some hoopla recommendations, um, film-wise anyway. And I don't know how many people have that ready today, but um, I, I have one. I know a couple of other people have them too. So I do. do you have one, David? Yeah, um, I was just gonna suggest that? Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. Uh, I remember seeing that on the big screen. It's got Ian McKellen, and um, it's such a great movie. It's you know basically a, about Sherlock Holmes in retirement when he's a bee, you know keeping bees in Sussex, and it's just and it's a whole and he gets involved in this whole case. But you know I can watch Ian McKellen for hours. I mean he's just oh I love he's, him. He's just brilliant. He's great. And uh, hardly recommend it. And another film I'd, I'd like to see, but I haven't seen yet, is The Color Out of Space. I don't ordinarily like Nicolas Cage, but I'm kind of intrigued because it's based on a Lovecraft short story. Have you? What is it called? The Color Out of Space? Yes, yeah, Color Out of Space. Color Out of Space is on Hoopla? Yeah, it was on Hoopla. <laughs> it's not, I think it's the first one. I, I saw the picture when it came up. I looked today and I thought, what, is that cool. Nicolas Cage? Oh, yeah, I hope so that I just, Nicolas Cage. I, I just know it's supposed to be kind of like Mandy, if you've seen it. It's supposed to be what, Max? Have you ever heard of the movie Mandy? 
No. Uh, it's like this other movie with Nicolas Cage, supposed to be very colorful, inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, and I just hear it's kind of similar, but I don't know. I'm going to check oh, out. David, I just wish you the best of luck with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this way. I have low expectations. <laughs> Actually, a really good actor. I mean, I've seen him in some films already. I thought he did a really good job. It just depends Maybe on what like he's been in a kind 25 of. 25 years ago? 28. Raising Arizona. Arizona. Raising Arizona, yeah. He was made in Moonstruck. Raising Arizona. That's a great one. When he was in Leaving Las Vegas, he, he played like. Okay, a that, I think. So right. so <laughs> <deaf. That> was... <laughs> but, but not Air Force One or anything. Else. No. <laughs> or like prison. Plane or something. Oh, okay. Be soft. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Who's next? I know Mary has one. Oh, Liz is raising her hand. Though. Okay, Liz has one. <laughs> um, I just watched a really great PBS documentary mm -hmm. um, called "A Sloth Named Velcro" about this um, rescued sloth in in I think Costa Rica, and and just about the the situation that sloths are in generally in South America and, and why they're they're endangered and threatened and was really good. I that love sloths. Nice. I'm so glad you recommended that. <laughs> it's, really good. Recommendation <laughs> it's got I lots think, of cute baby sloths in it. I oh, think we no. should shut this down because like who can do better than that? What's the name of it, Liz? It's called A Sloth Named Velcro. Oh, how it's a great cute. title. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's a great recommendation. I will not forget that yes. title ever. <laughs> no, that's a great title. Does anyone else have a recommendation? I do, but it's it's very shallow. May I still add it? I want you to add it. We we okay. need something to I think so. Yeah. Need to lighten the mood. The pajama color. If you have diabetes, you want to shoot up before you watch it. It's a classic 2004 musical fantasy starring Anne Hathaway, and it's Ella Enchanted. I was going to recommend awesome. that. You don't have to be a 13 year old girl movie. to enjoy it. That's awesome. I was definitely going to recommend that. That was my favorite movie. So right? You can recommend Ella Enchanted too. Yeah. Well, now I need to change my movie because now I need a different one, so I'm going to pick Chicago. Oh, okay. Oh, you're really gonna class. say Ella Enchanted? I was really gonna say Ella Enchanted. I didn't realize it was on Hoopla, and I haven't seen it in a few years. But I used to watch it at like every single sleepover as a kid. Of course, yeah. I watched it in my forties. But you know, whatever. <laughs> Listen, that is a great movie. But okay. I'll recommend Chicago because the music okay. in that Chicago is, is wonderful. You have too. a couple of things to say about Chicago. Yes. Okay. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> I missed that. What? Do you have anything to say about Chicago? A the movie? Words, yeah. Um, it, besides, it, besides the music being amazing, yeah. um, Catherine Zeta-Jones yeah. is great. It's classic for her and Renee Zellweger too. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of the, like the song where all the women are singing about why they are in jail is just amazing. It's he had it coming. Number. Yeah, he had it coming. It's great. It's, it, that listening to that song makes me feel empowered. I mean, not yeah. to commit murder or anything. I do not recommend that. <laughs> but just like as a woman, it's a very empowering song. It's a great song. Um, so you know, I just it's a great movie. It's a great musical if you like musicals. It is. I can say right now that I've never seen any of the recommendations, so that's kind of cool. So oh, wow. I have like a list of things to watch. Yes. Does anyone else have a recommendation? Okay, I have one. Oh. It's called, and this is the one that's 28 years old. So come use the spot, okay? Uh -huh. That's what I was thinking of when I said that. Okay. Like Water for Chocolate. Oh, oh that's a good film. Yeah, I like yeah. that. that is. Which is based on a book called Like Water for Chocolate. Yeah. Oh. And the book was written by Laura Esquivel, and the screenplay was written by Laura Esquivel. And the movie came out in 1992. Okay. And it stars Marco Leonardi and Loom Cavazos. And the little synopsis is, when tradition prevents her from marrying the man she loves, a young woman discovers she has a unique talent for cooking. I emphasize the word unique 
Mm. <laughs> I smell trouble. <laughs> this is a magical realism film. Aww. And for those of you who don't know what magical realism is, it's basically an artistic genre in which everything is depicted realistically. It's a realistic narrative. Um, it's natural in every way. But there are elements, surreal and fantasy elements that are put in there that aren't acknowledged as surreal or fantasy. They're acknowledged as being part of the natural world. Hmm. It's amazing. It's a really good film, I've seen it's it. It's really amazing. And it's one of the films that shows a lot of cooking, which there are films out there that show a lot of cooking that are classics that I love, like Babette's mm. Feast mm. and um, Big Night. Mm. It's just something about watching them cook. Okay. One thing I have to mention is that the movie is in Spanish, so there are subtitles, but you won't notice, and you will be enchanted. Sort of like Ella Enchanted, except. Yes. That was a good wrap up. There. Which is also based on a book. Right, exactly. Oh. All right, so are we recommending movies on Hoopla? Because I don't have access to Hoopla yet, but. That's okay uh, for you. You can recommend anything you want because I'm sure whoever's watching would like recommendations. Regardless. Okay, yes. Well. Okay, so they're one of my favorite movies of all time. This is a very obscure movie, but it's to me a classic. And it's um, one of Albert Brooks. I think it's Albert Brooks' best movie. I love him. I do too. So yeah. he's in it and Julie Haggerty is in it. Do you know what movie I'm going to recommend? Yes. Which one? It is, it is um, something about America. Um, yes. Lost in America. Lost in America, yes. And, 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 so you know, good. It's, it's funny because I was living in an RV in Europe for a month. Mm -hmm. when it was tiny and what and it's funny because I kept thinking about one of my favorite movies lost in America they're actually in a really great big Winnebago but it is so funny and, egg. oh yeah and you're gonna you would love it because it's it's just like the best humor and Al, and Gary Marshall is in it oh. Albert Brooks and Julie Haggerty's timing is just classic yes. and it, yes. it's a really really fun movie I highly recommend it yep. and for anyone who didn't see pain and glory Oh, it, you talked about subtitles. It's the one with Antonio Banderas. I want to see that. Oh, oh it's so beautiful. Yeah, really yeah. good movie. Oh my gosh, cinephiles, it's to mm -hmm. die for cinematographically, cinema photographically. It's so yeah. beautifully shot mm -hmm. and so heartfelt. It's a completely different movie than Lost in America, but it just is mind blowing. <laughs> I want to see that too. Yeah. So many oh, great recommendations. Max, do you have anything? It doesn't have to be Hoopla. He's gone. He's, I think he's listening off and on in between things. Okay. But I will see if he has a recommendation. Aww. Well, he would recommend The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Oh, yes. That was so disturbing. Wasn't yes. it? Yes. I did see that. <laughs> I was traumatized. <laughs> More please. details, please. Wasn't my favorite. Oh. <laughs> it's black and white. Robert Pattinson, Willem Dafoe play Lighthouse. And he should have. He should have got an Oscar. There I mean, he is. Max. Oh, thank you well, for summoning me. Matt, well, why don't you, not brilliant? Why don't what? you give us a little thing about the lighthouse? Because uh, I'm sure you would recommend it, right? I would obviously recommend it. It's a <laughs> honestly, I didn't know what to expect from this film. Actually, all I heard was it was great from the can reviews. I saw it. It was late at night, and throughout the entire time. I was just smiling so freaking much. Again, still trying to be respectful. It Thank is you. a film unlike anything I've ever, ever seen. Honestly, just cinematography, the acting, like everything. It's a film which perfectly blends the ideas of being haunting and comedic. Please tell me we can talk about it. But then again, the discussion would be five hours long. We can definitely talk about it when we view it and view it for discussion. We could do that. Can I give a recommendation? And you can introduce it. Yes, Rachel. Okay. I don't think it's on Hoopla, though, but I recommend the movie Rocket Man. Yes! Oh. Oh, John's life. Yes. Oh, yes. I like that. Oh, that movie. Love that movie. movie. Oh, my it's a guy that plays Elton John is phenomenal. He sings all the songs. I mean, yeah, he's, it's, I mean it's incredible. Yeah, it's really fun. It's, it's highly stylized, and, you know, I mean, it's a musical, so it's not meant to necessarily be a realistic portrayal right. mm -hmm. of his life, but it does kind of portray the uh, complexities and the, I would say, the dark, dark, um, 
times that, you know, that John went through and Agreed. I mean, just all of the acting is just, is just it's phenomenal. Amazing. I've seen it five it's times. Good. I've watched it on the Maybe airplane the coming costumes, back to Holland. Everything is just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I agree. A part. Yeah. Like literally like Lynn Sterner, who works at the library, she and I were on our way back from Europe and we decided to watch it together, you know, just push the button at the same time. Yep. And, you know, for the, we were in tears. We were in tears. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Intense. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Agreed. And Perfect. it's interesting because the guy that plays Elton John is actually a good friends with, with him in real life. Uh, he is yeah. now. Yeah. They are now. Yeah. They're like, yeah. Oh, like so buddies fun. or something. Oh, and he's, he was so good at it. Taron Egerton was phenomenal. That's great casting. Incredible. Perfect, right? yeah. really Aaron, really do you have great. anything? <laughs> Not anything on Hoopla. <laughs> okay. It is something else. Um, I'm trying to think. There was one that was on Netflix that I just saw. It was actually up for Academy Awards. Um, what was it called? It was, uh, hold on, hold that thought. It was, um, let's see. It was very, very long, but it was very, very good, and it was worth a watch. Irishman? Yes, The Irishman. Oh, yes. wow. Yeah. Um, yes. it's, I totally, I was very nervous about watching it just because it's like, it's almost like four hours long. Like it's ridiculously yes. long, but it's, you need the whole movie. You have to see the whole thing because it all, it all works together, but it's very, the acting is amazing. Obviously it's got Robert De Niro. It's got, I mean, it's got all like classic Al Pacino, so you know, you, yeah, you, you can't beat the acting in it. And the storyline's great. It was, course, mm -hmm. man. was well done. I agree. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, I kind of scribbled, I'll probably miss some, uh, one of the recommendations or two of the recommendations. So I'm not going to give you the lit, the long list, but whoever's watching it can you know, pick it out of the conversation. So before we go, we have Silva Osborne, who's going to tell us real quick how to access Hoopla and how to get a library card. Awesome. Right. Yeah. So to get a library card, because that's the first thing you need, um, we're offering temporary free cards so that you can get to our online resources. Um, there's a link on the main page. The URL for the library is mymanatee.org slash library. Okay. And when you go to the main page, um, we've got some announcements and things on there, but you should see a link that says, you know, don't have a library card, click here or something like that. And it'll take you to the page on our website about library cards with information about loan periods and all of that. Uh, and there will be another link that will take you to the actual form. Um, awesome. And it's a Google form. You just, we just need all of your, um, your address and date of birth and email. You, the most important thing is an email because you're going to need that, especially if you, um, you have to create a pin number mm -hmm. for your card. So you're going to need an email address so you can reset your pin. Um, or we can uh, potentially do that over the phone as well. Um, but once you get a library card, when you go back to our main library page, there are going to be four orange buttons that you're going to see, and you're going to click on the one that says download and stream, and that will take you to where we have our ebook and e audiobook databases, and you, you would just click on Hoopla. That's amazing. And that will take you to the website where you'll create an account. Mm -hmm. And again, you will need an email address for Hoopla in addition yeah. to your library card. So you'll just create a quick account, um, put up all that information, and then you'll be able to check out five items per month um, mm -hmm. with that card. Mm -hmm. Everything is available immediately. You don't have to wait. There's no hold list or anything. Once you check something out, once you I'll borrow it, you have it, it immediately. That's what uh, I heard about it. Yeah, so oh it's a little bit different from some of the other databases that function more like a traditional library. Mm -hmm. um, so everything is available immediately. Books and, and e-audio books and things like that are available for three weeks. Uh, movies are usually three days. That's and amazing. we've also got music albums and comic books, and there's a whole bunch of content on Hoopla. You do have to be a Manatee County resident to get a card, or you need to work or go to school in Manatee County um, to be able to apply for a card, but that gets you access to all that and so much more. And in addition to the five checkouts per month with everything that's going on, Hoopla also has a new thing called bonus borrows, which are titles that you can borrow that do not count against your five per month. So they're like free things that you can borrow for however the three weeks or however long it is that's that nice. don't count to your five so you get actually you do get more 
um, right now while everything is online. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. The one thing about Hoopla that is so great, and I tend to like browse the movies, although there's so much more there, uh, music and everything else. But when I, when I went to browse the movies, there were over 11,000 items that came up. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Very There's a lot. Yeah. So Hoopla is just amazing, and it's so easy to use. So. Did you say that? I'm Go sorry. ahead, Kim. Go ahead, Kim. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I just wanted to ask, um, thank you. Um, Silva, you mentioned something about the phone. I can't, my, my American phone plan doesn't work in Canada right now, and I can't call long distance out of the hotel. So would I be precluded from accessing Hoopla until I go through that with you? No. So um, you can, you do do everything in the phone or in the, in the app. Um, there's an app and you can do everything on the website as well. The, I was just saying um, for if you forget your PIN number okay. for your library card, you can either email us or call. We can't really okay. give out PIN numbers over the fall or over email because okay. of security reasons. But um, that's why we're, um, that's why we want you to have an email, uh, email account on your library account. So you can reset your PIN yourself. Thank but you. if you can't, we do have some staff available in the building um, who can do that over the phone. Okay. If you Wonderful. need help resetting your PIN. But no, you should be fine without a phone to be able to still access as long as you get set up with the, just apply for the library card and then create your Hoopla account. Okay. Um, you just have to go through the library's website to get to Hoopla, but you should Perfect. be fine. Yeah. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you for letting me jump in. David, I appreciate it. With four days left, I'm going to take advantage of Hoopla in the hotel. Thank oh, you. Good. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It looks like we have a nice solid hour of discussion under our belts. Um, I want to thank all you guys for coming. Um, and I want to thank all of you who are watching. Um, thank you for watching. And um, hopefully you got something great out of this. And hopefully you try Hoopla because it's very enjoyable. And we will see you next time because we will have another episode of What's the Hoopla? <laughs> so, thank you all for coming. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Shout thank out you to all. David's t-shirt, too. I love the cassette. The cassette? He's got a cassette on his t-shirt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. Very old school. <laughs> yes. Thank you for this awesome event. It's really lifted my spirits as and I thank continue you for to the isolate people who came. Thank you, Liz, for coming. I hope you yes. come to the next one. Yes. Please. Thank um, you all for coming. We love yeah. your input and fun. Kim also. Maybe we'll see you for 1917. I am definitely in. I'll be Excellent. there. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye.